Hey guys, Zookeeper Chris here. Welcome back to another Planet Zoo video. Today we are going to do another tutorial and that is on the 4x4 Adventure Tour Ride or as some call it the Jeep Ride. Now, some awesome news for anybody that's adding a ride to their park. Rides used to be a bit buggy and guests sometimes would not want to go on the transport rides, but PlanZoo has released a patch which really helps out with that. So go ahead and add those rides into your parks now should be a lot easier to get the guests on those rides. The 4x4 Adventure Tour Ride is one of my favorite rides in the game. It's one that you're most likely to see at a real life zoo. So I'm super excited to show you guys this video. I'm gonna try and keep it as short as possible and just get you all the information you need to have a successful ride. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to know is how do you unlock the 4x4 Adventure Ride? If you have not unlocked the ride yet, be sure to go down to zoo. Go to your mechanic research and drag somebody down to transport rides. The 4x4 adventure ride is the very last one you'll unlock. Once you're at level 4 on the transport rides, that's when you will unlock the 4x4 adventure tour. So be sure to do that first. If you're in sandbox mode, obviously you don't have to worry about any of this and you will already have the ride unlocked. Alright, so when you're first placing the ride down, you're going to go down to facilities. You're going to hit up that transport rides area and then boom transport 4x4 adventure tour if you want to raise it up or lower it you can hold shift and do that you can press z to move it around just like any other item in the game down here you can turn on angle snap you can change which side the entry and exit is on the ride you can change this later as well so if you're not sure about this you know build the ride first and then you can worry about what side you place the entrance and exit whatever works best in that area all right so wherever you like it go ahead and place it down and then from there it's going to go into your track editing what i suggest is clicking on station and adding a few extra spots to it because personally i like to have a couple of the cars inside the station at one time so i'll usually put three or four stations together once you've got your station placed out you can go down here to utilities and hit up standard track or you can do standard track with railings, whatever you prefer. So standard track is this track right here. It has no railings, animals can go over it. The second option here is standard track with railings. And as you can see here, it has railings on the side of the track, so animals cannot cross through that section. It really just depends on what you want to do for your ride and your habitat. If you like the look of the railings, you can go ahead and add this. Just keep in mind the animals won't be able to cross over. They'll be on each side. You don't mind the animals crossing in front of the ride then go ahead and just use the standard track anytime an animal does stop in front of the ride the ride will stop and then let the animal do its thing and then as soon as the animal is clear of the track the ride will just go ahead and continue on like normal once you've already set down the track you can always go back and select that track piece and change it if you want so keep that in mind for this example i'm just going to use standard track the whole way through so when you're placing track you also have these options down here to start we have angle snap which is pretty much what it says it is so angle snap is pretty self-explanatory just like other items in planet zoo like barriers works the same exact way turns in certain angles that you set auto tunnel is self-explanatory again so to show you guys an example of auto tunneling you can go ahead and go down and back up and it'll create the tunnel for you so one thing you'll see that happens if you have auto tunneling turned on and you start going above ground it'll put terrain under your ride so what you can do is make sure that you have auto tunneling turned off if you're going above the ground or you can also go to terrain and push away all of the terrain underneath the ride and you can see as you push away the terrain supports will come up underneath the ride as well and again, auto tunneling does also work through mountains. And this is honestly the most annoying part with auto tunneling on the 4x4 adventure ride, but it's easy enough to take away afterwards. So, so that pretty much covers auto tunneling. Another tip that I want to share with building your rides in your zoos is to disable track collision in your settings. So you hit escape, you go to settings, you go to game, and then down here you have scenery collision, track collision, and terrain collision. So disabling track collision can really help out with building the ride through your zoo. It makes building around objects a lot easier in your zoo. As you can see, I can go straight through this tree if I want. As you can see, without track collision, I can't get really close to this tree at all. But if you disable it, let me show you what that looks like. So with track collision disabled, you can get as close as you want to anything in your zoo. I usually recommend turning track collision off. It allows you to build much closer to your track and just makes the building experience 100 times easier. So I always recommend doing that whenever you're building any ride in the game. You have your height markers down here, which works the same way as it does in other rides. You can either have them turned off, you can have them terrain relative, or you can have them relative to sea level. 
Personally, I don't really care too much for these. I just turn them off. They can be good if you want to try and keep your track level throughout the zoo. So set those to whatever you want. You can also always go back to the ride and turn those on and off and adjust the sections of the track however you want. And then track supports are pretty self-explanatory as you're building. If you don't want to use them, nothing shows up. You have track supports turned on, you will have those track supports built as you continue, as you can see. Uh, some people actually like to build their own track supports. Personally, I'm not that creative at all. So I just put these regular track supports in and let the game build it how it wants. But if you are a little bit more creative and you want to try building your own track supports, you can go ahead and turn that feature on or off. You can also change this later. So say you have your ride completely built and you put track supports across the entire ride, but you want to change that later down the road. You want to try and make your own track supports. You can take them off later as well. So, you know, just do whatever works for you at the time that you're building the ride. You can always edit it later. Camera is how the camera follows the ride as you build it. So normally I just have mine on free. It's the least annoying. I can move the camera however I want. These other ones can get pretty annoying. So I'll go ahead and experiment with those if you want. Down here we have ride customization colors. This is specifically for the track itself. I usually don't worry about this when I'm building the ride for the first time. I just build the ride out and then I'll customize the colors down the road, which we will get into in a little bit. Your other options down here that you have are smooth all and smooth banking. We'll go over that in a little bit. And then with the track section itself, so you have these four menu items right here. This is the length of the track that you are building. If you want to do a sharp turn, you usually want to keep it smaller. If you want to go ahead and just go look further distances, you can make it longer. Uh, this right here is obviously which direction it is turning in. This here is the height. You can go up to 22 degrees up or down. And then finally, the last option here is for your banking. If you want to turn it left or right, as you can see. Another thing you will see as you're building the track is autocomplete. You can click this button here and the ride will find its way back to the nearest station. Autocomplete can be pretty handy if you are building to the back of your zoo and you don't really care how it gets back to the front. You can hit autocomplete. I usually like to personalize my ride as much as possible, so I don't use autocomplete too much, but if you want to make things super simple, you can go ahead and use autocomplete. It's there for you. So we're going to go ahead and build a pretty basic ride here. As we're building this, I do want to show you how to add a second station to your ride. So as you're building, you go down here to station again. You choose what entry and exit you want. Again, you can edit this later and then it'll bring up the station on your track. You click a couple times again. You want to make your station longer and then go back to utilities, go back to your standard track and start laying it down. Eventually, when your track is about to connect, you'll find this little jigsaw piece. You can go ahead and just click that and it'll connect the ride. If for some reason the jigsaw piece is grayed out for you, it just means that you need to alter the previous section of track. Try and make it a little more realistic and natural to get to that section and usually it'll connect. And there we go. We have a really basic setup with two stations here. Usually in bigger zoos, you're gonna have multiple stations, but if you're doing a small ride, you might just have one station. So I wanted to show you guys the smooth all and smooth banking. What you need to do is select a section of track. I'm just going to select the whole ride so you can kind of see it a little better. Once you have your track section selected, you just click smooth all or smooth banking. Smooth banking is more just the left and right angles of the ride. Smooth all will smooth everything out. Usually the way that you want to do it is hit smooth all a couple of times because it works very similar to the terrain editing. Usually when you're smoothing a section of the track out, you want to go ahead and press the button a couple times. It works very similar to smoothing out terrain where you need to press it a few times or go over that same section a few times to really smooth it out. So to show you guys an example of this, I've selected the whole track and I'll click smooth all a couple of times and you can see every time I click it, it really smooths it out a ton. So yeah, when you're smoothing out the ride, just go ahead and smooth it out as much as you want. If you go too far, you can always hit control Z and back up to a previous point. Now we've got our basic ride set up. We're going to need a couple of things to where it's actually operational. So when you click on the ride, you'll see of a problem. This middle section here where it says problem isn't really too helpful. You kind of have to dig in and see what's going on. But here right off the bat, we see both stations are unpowered. So let's fix that. So now that you've got your power set up, go ahead and click on the ride, click on one of your stations, and then you'll see station requirements, which we need to fulfill. So we'll go ahead and place an entrance. and then place an exit. And I usually like to place my entrance and exit nearby each other up at the front. You need to connect the queue path down here to the entrance. And then the exit, we'll just use a regular path. For this purpose, we're just gonna connect them both together just so the ride runs. So now we've got that station set up, we'll click on the ride again, go to this other station here, which you can see is not working. 
and we'll set it up as well the same way. And if you want to change which side the entrance and exit is on the ride, you can always do that after. Go ahead and go to edit track, select your station down here, and then go ahead and choose which side it's on. And as I mentioned earlier, if you wanna change which side of the ride the exit and entrance is on, you can do that after you've already placed it. Just click on the ride, go to edit track, make sure you have the station you want to work on selected. Once you have your station selected, go down here and you can see you can change which side it's on. So for this one, I'll just put them both on the right hand side. All right, now that we've got our entrance and exit set up on the stations, we can go ahead and open up the entire ride. So let's go over some of these menus that you see up here. Up top, you have the name of your ride, which you can change. Just click on it. So the menu down below your ride name is your status of the ride, which can be set to open testing or closed with each status. You'll also notice that the color of the lights at the entrance of your ride changes. If for some reason it's not letting you open your ride, be sure to run a test run first after you've edited anything. Sometimes the game makes you do a test run before you can open it and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why it's inconsistent below the ride status. You have all these other tabs. You have stations, which shows you a list of your stations and if they are open or closed. You can click on each station and rename those as well. Renaming the stations can be super helpful with you IDing what station you're working on. So go ahead and rename those to whatever you want. You can also close stations and reopen them from here. We'll get into station menus in just a little bit. Next up, you have your ride overview. You have your statistics from the test runs that you've done. You have your finances. You can do your customizations here. So let's go ahead and get into that right now. So in customizations, you have track colors and car colors. Let's go over here to this crazy colored ride that we've got going on to show you the differences. So you can see you can customize the track, you can customize the sides of the track, the supports, the seats of the ride. You can customize the slashes on the front, the main body of the ride, the top. So there's a lot of customization you can do here. So have fun with it. One thing to note when you click on the ride and go over to customize the ride, it's customizing the entire ride. So you see when I click over here, it changes everything at once. You can also change each track section one by one. Let me show you that really quick. So for that, you need to click on the ride, go to edit track and then select a section of track that you want to customize. So we've selected this section of track. Now down here is those customization options for that track section. And as you can see, the colors were only applied to that one section of track. Now you wanna customize the sections piece by piece last, because if you go to your ride and you go to customize ride, it's gonna override the entire ride, as you can see. So go ahead and customize the entire ride how you want first, and then you can go piece by piece Customizing the track pieces piece by piece can be really helpful if you want to theme it for a certain zone that the ride's going through. If you want to change it to blue when it's going over water or something like that, it gives you those options. So again, the most important thing with customization is customize the entire ride first and then do section by section once you're happy with the entire ride's customization. All right, after ride customization, we have ride operations. This is where you can add more cars to your track and you can change the speed of the cars. With ride operations and number of cars, first off, you have to close the ride to edit that. If you have multiple stations, you can see that they will be split up evenly between the stations. And then max speed is totally up to you, whatever you're feeling. You want your guests to go through the ride at a super slow speed and go to three. If you want to go pretty fast, 15, totally up to you. And then down below, we have a couple more options finally for the ride. Save it as a blueprint, drag and select multiple things, edit the track, which is what you're going to need to select anytime you want to make track edits. And again, the ride has to be closed for that. You have your ride camera, which is super awesome. You also have the ability to move your ride, has to be closed to do that. You can edit the ride and then you can also boom, just delete the whole thing. So that was the ride menu options. On top of that, you also have your station options, which change based on what station you have selected. So let's go to this one first. And just so I know which one I'm looking at up here, you can click the pinpoint boop. And now we know we're dealing with the station over here. So from here, you can name your station, which we talked about. You can change the status of that particular station. You can go down here to your requirements that we've already met. We have our station overview, our ride statistics, our financial statistics, which is where you can change the price of your station. Personally, I like to make my station for free. But if your queue times are getting crazy long or something and you want to edit how many people are getting on the ride, you can always bump up the prices if you want. 
Uh, after finances, you have entrance and exit. It gives you the option to move your entrance and exit once you've already placed them. Right here, you have load rules, which is super important. So let's jump into this a little bit. So load rules here work very similar for all the other rides. You have your minimum rider load. What that means is this is the minimum amount of people that have to be on the vehicle in the station before it dispatches out. So right now the vehicle has to be half full, otherwise it's not gonna be sent out. You have your minimum wait time and your max wait time. This is the wait time that the vehicle is in the station. So right now the vehicle is gonna sit in the station for at least 60 seconds. And if it gets to 110 seconds, it's just gonna go down here, you have your minimum departure interval, which is how often the vehicles are being dispatched out of that station. And then down here, you have the option to do not block the station. Do not block station overwrites pretty much everything up here to make sure that the station is never being blocked and waited on. Do not block station is pretty helpful because if you have guests sitting in the back waiting for somebody to get on the ride and there's nobody in queue yet, then they're just stuck there. Before some most recent updates, it used to be pretty hard getting guests on and off the rides. Recently, Planet Zoo had some updates which makes getting guests onto your rides a lot more easier. If for whatever reason you have issues getting guests into the queue of your ride or getting on and off the ride, let me show you what I use in my parks really quick. So these are the load rules that I use in my franchise zoo and it works for me. Go ahead and pause here if you want to just copy and paste into your zoo and see if that works for you. But yeah, for whatever reason, if you have issues with guests getting on and off the ride, it may have something to do with these settings. So be sure to tweak them and edit them. So you may have to tweak these settings a little bit if it's not working out for you in your zoo. This is just what works the best for me in my zoo. And that was before they did the update that helped get guests more interested on the transport rides. So the way I see it is if this worked best for me before the update, it should work fine after the update as well. And this is what I'm currently using. Be sure to leave a comment in the section down below if you're having issues and I'd be happy to help you out. So one final thing to note with your stations is when you click on your station and you go to ride statistics and you see the station scenery rating, this here can be pretty important. Your station scenery rating is something that you're gonna to want to get up to a higher point. I believe it does help attract more guests to that station. So if you find that guests are not coming to that particular station of your ride and you notice that your station scenery rating is low, try and bump that up a bit. The way to bump that up is exactly what you think. You need to decorate your station. This right here, obviously we have the bare bones station, nothing on it and it's low. So a really useful tip to decorate your station is click on the station that you want to work on. Go over here to start building on station grid. Click that. Select one of your walls under architecture and you can now see how easy it is to decorate your station however you see fit. And once you've got like these archways placed here, you can move your entrance and exit points to be right in the middle. So yeah, you guys get the idea. Again, just click on the station, go down to start building on station grid, and then just go crazy there with your decorations of the station. Another random note here for decorating the station, you see over on this left-hand side, it's like regular asphalt. Go down here to paths, select the queue, and you can select the queue that you're using on the other side if you want it to match. So that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself and I hope you learned something new. If I missed out on anything important or you think that there's a tip that you have that I skipped out, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And just a reminder, if you ever wanna chat with me live, I am over at twitch.tv slash zookeeperchris every Friday and Saturday night at 7 p.m. EST. The link for that can be found in the description down below. And if you enjoyed this video, as always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Again, thanks for watching and until next time, stay wild.